So I was on my way home from Tim Hortons, um, where I was working, um, and I had a thought pop into my head. Now this is pretty cool. I don't think I've heard this from anyone else. So if I, if other people, smarter theologians than me, can listen to this and confirm, like, wow, yeah, Jacob, that's a good idea then this might be, this is probably God revealing something here. Um, and that is a good analogy for the Trinity, for, you know, God's um, being, you know, how he exists um, in, in whatever his state is, right? Um, and that is this. Um, we can think of the Father as the mind, uh, the Son as the Word, that's pretty, it's in Scripture, and the Holy Spirit as the breath or the, the emphasis of, of uh, the expression, okay? Um, and so this is interesting the more I think about it, because, uh, and this is why, is because um, the mind is not the word and is not the expression, but the mind is the source of both of those things, okay? The word is not the mind and is not the expression, but it comes from the mind and it works with the expression. Um... And the expression is not the mind or the word, but it comes from the mind and it works uh, with the word. Um, so we kind of have that trinity going on, don't we? That three in one. Because altogether, and independently, they do, they have different tasks, don't they? Um, the expression gives power to the word it it can you can have an in, you you know you can have the words you know t typed out but it's not the same when you actually speak them you can mean different things in terms of how you speak them right and you can't really put your finger on it either when you listen to someone speak in a certain way you can only measure their words the words uh, are are m much more objective than the expression is the expression moves in whichever way that it, it wants to and yet you can kind of um, intuitively understand. Uh, is intuitive the right word? Sorry. Um, yeah, I guess I guess so. Intuitively understand it, but you can't really put a intellectual, you know, finger on it. You just kind of get what they're saying by listening to the to the expression of their voice, right? That that to me that sounds a lot like the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moves like the wind. It goes wherever it pleases. Um and uh you 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 feel the Holy Spirit working. You intuitively um see see the spirit working, but uh you you can't put your finger on it. And that's the point. Um whereas the word Jesus, you know, just like words, um, the, uh, words can words divide, right? Because they're objective. Um, they uh, encourage and they can discourage. They can bless and they can uh, give wrath, right? And that's exactly what we see Jesus in his character objectively behaving um, in the Gospels and in the Re in the Book of Revelation, right? Um, he's a gentle warrior. He's very objective. He, you know. He he just speaks the truth. Um, he's the um, uh, he 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 is God's word in physical form to us, uh, right? Um, so I find that very interesting. And the mind, the mind is the source of both of these things. The Father is the source of the Son and and the Spirit, um, and so. Uh, they get their instructions from the father. The fa um, that that's hit. That's the father's role in all of this, right? Um, and, and and yet now, the the thing is, these three things they have to work together.
They have to exist together in order to have any sort of message, any sort of speech to occur, right? If you just have the word, uh, but but no but no mind and no expression, you just have you just have you know visual speech text right but that's not the analogy we're looking at we're not saying it's we're not saying that the trinity is like written text the trinity is like spoken word right so if you just have the word not the other two parts that's not what you have if you just have expression uh you don't have that either you just have grunts you have breaths of air um there's no message being being given and if you have just the mind and no speech or expression uh, well, then you just have silence. You just have free floaty thoughts. There's no message being given, and so the spoken the spoken word. Or I, uh, let, let's let's try to eliminate using a a part of the definition in its own definition. A part of the the thought in its own definition. So not the spoken word, but the spoken message. This this speech. Um, I think I think that's a good analogy for the trinity because they're they're independent but also one something to think about i think let me know what you think comment below tell me why i'm wrong uh i love being proven wrong because that means i just got proven right <laughs> but all for god's glory hopefully this is you know new and exciting for some of you to hear uh because it's exciting for me to think about i yeah, um, if you guys agree and if you guys think this is good, if if you, the church, um, agree, wow, this is good, then this is, then I, I totally believe this is just from God. If it's not, if it's not good, then it's just for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, have a good one. God bless.